narayan and all other friends who are joining from various places let me first congratulate you dr devin for organizing this and also for uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be a small part of this uh, i think in my cv you have put me as a labor secretary i was a labor commissioner in the 90s uh, which is uh, in kerala is a much bigger job than labor secretary in terms of you know the the, the difficulties that one faced in dealing with the labor issues in kerala so i was uh, fortunate or unfortunate uh, to hold that post in the late 90s in kerala um and those days i mean all of you know that the new laws have come labor code the uh, minimum uh, sorry code on wages all the 29 labor related laws have been condensed to four now is a very welcome development i know i know that small establishments small hospitals and individual doctors practicing with a few people were definitely facing a lot of problems in kerala like madam saroj nair said uh, uh, kerala's uh, health contribution from the this sector of people are very high the private sector may, may be now giving around maybe for that 50% of the health services requirement of the state and employing over a lakh or maybe more of people lakhs of people in fact lakhs of people and it is a major uh, uh, sector of the economy now and uh, last few years we have seen tremendous uh, uh, big strikes strike by nurses strike by in kvm hospital all sorts of thing i in a, in a short uh, time i was gathering what are the labor problems in the in the hospital sector and kerala really faced it in the last few years now the laws which were governing this i remember as a labor commissioner the the multitude of laws was making one crazy and uh, the inspector that you have is an inspector of n number of laws he himself was confused everybody was confused no, labor is consumed mostly mostly the beneficiaries were uh, the the multitude of trade unions and uh, of course kerala has uh, um, uh, you know uh, no shortage of them every small party to big parties of uh, trade unions and uh, they 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 rule the roost everywhere this is what i faced in during my time as a labor commissioner so a lot of uh, welcome changes have happened as far as the employee and employer both are concerned now uh, and and so the definition of employee i just had a glance through this god this uh, four laws which have newly come uh, by by i could uh, grasp it a little faster but not didn't get enough time but of course uh, it has a great uh, a welcome change that has happened i hope uh, uh, the the new laws will definitely help the the economy to really boost uh, the the amount of paper work the first thing that i have seen is the amount of paper work that every establishment were doing relating to the labor laws that must have come down by maybe what many times it has come yeah, down yeah. that is the first uh, change that i have immediately noted there were used to yeah, be now yeah, i don't yeah, know yeah, how yeah, the appropriate yeah. government that is the state government will make what rule again per, again prescribing yeah, a number yeah. of forms and uh, creating a clumsy it is possible in kerala that they make uh, yeah, rule yeah, but yeah, first yeah. request that some member of your association or yeah, I can actually can uh, actually be in those committees which uh, form please the first uh, request that i make you is that uh, please be part of that rule making process kerala has a practice that because including me i am saying uh, the bureaucracy yes, makes um, unworkable rules they, they 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 make rules which are very unfriendly and kerala is very famous i i i, I have uh, a lot of friends in other states some states do have similar thing but kerala excels in making complicated rules now that we have made a simple law 29 law condensed into four uh, the state government shall really make uh, should make uh, rules which are simple which are implementable which are uh, less bothersome for the uh, uh, for, for the establishments so so that is the first point that i want to request you that you you have to be a part of that thing somebody from your side should uh, raise this issue make simple laws which are manageable every law would require certain um, rules to be made 
and the state government can make it simple if they want uh, the basic requirement of that law where where uh, rules have to be framed rest of the things are left to the state government so somebody uh, from among you should see that the rules are also framed simple and easily operable that's the first point that i made then uh, uh, the, the the multiplicity of trade unions will come down because now we had a pro made a provision of 10% of the uh, the employees of or workers of the establishment a minimum to form a trade union and also 100 and a minimum 100 if it is more so that is a very welcome change the multiplicity of trade unions and that has happened mostly in kerala may not be in other states kerala is the one which is now going to be much um, uh, you know more disciplined by this law because here there are uh, umpteen number of parties and every party has a trade union and they will go and form everywhere with uh, capturing over seven people and registering a trade union that is a great welcome change even for your sector i mean the health sector or any sector for that matter so these two things have come then the i used to say when i was the labor commissioner one fundamental law is required to protect the wages there has to be a minimum wage now that minimum wage also is very wisely put in in this so if establishments which pay that minimum wage are will be dealt to, will, be, will 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 be very good establishments if there is a minimum wages which are coming the process of making minimum wage appears to be the same in this law but once the minimum wage is there if that you are paying uh, then you are much safer in this situation because the bonus and everything is very simply made into this made very clear you had a plethora of uh, case laws. I have seen by the name of the partisans who are coming, there are experts in industrial relations, experts in uh, labor laws, names I have seen, like Kadavan, Gobalabla himself. Uh, then uh, you know, there are other names whom I know. They're all present there. Uh, their jobs will be much more easy. Maybe I don't know the lawyers were uh, looking for more cases, but this will reduce their number of cases. Then the, the earlier thing, there used to be work committees in the establishment. Now, this is made very clear that work committees has to be there. They, they call it uh, council, negotiating council, uh, all, all that all that thing. If you follow, you will have uh, less number of problems when compared to the earlier laws, which were heckling every establishment through a highly bureaucratized process, inspectors landing at any time and creating problems. I saw a lot of change in the inspection process. So all those things you need to uh, ensure that the rules support uh, this philosophy of this law, not, not again a very detailed procedure. And this is what I, I could, uh, through a glance of the thing I found, it's a welcome change. It actually make the life of all simple. I don't think uh, many rights of the uh, 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 an employee, employees of taken away. Almost all the rights which were there is existing. The way it is uh, uh, established or the way it is done through trade unions and all that, I, I don't um, uh, need, I don't have the time to explain how we faced the problems with the old laws. Uh, and the lawyers, the, the, the establishment uh, managers who are sitting here, they know. So I would only uh, uh, tell you that you are get, entering into a much better labor relations and labor law related uh, uh, regime that you are going to enter into a fantastic regime uh, which should um, help you to grow. But at the same time, I would also call upon you to be well aware of these uh, laws because the laws, number of laws have come down. It is easy for somebody, some personal manager, some uh, HR people in your establishment to know if you don't have such managers, let the people spend a little time. These are simple laws which you can manage very well. So the unmanageability of the earlier laws and its uh, actions have become much more simplified. So I'm, uh, I expect that the life of uh, the, the, the both sides, the employee and employers, maybe the, maybe the complication relating to trade union has become simplified. Their life also made, made very simple. So all the three actors, which we call the tripartite uh, sort of thing, the government officer, the establishment, and the labor, the tripartite relations have not been taken away. They all become much more simple, easy to work, easy to get into better results. 
So all those complicated situation has gone. So I, I expect uh, 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 a lot of benefits accruing to everybody and situation things become much simpler. And uh, these uh, classes and other things will definitely educate the thing. But this is, uh, this is very new. One class uh, may not be sufficient. Maybe we have to have more of such uh, discussion for people to imbibe the spirit of the new law. Uh, with that, uh, a few words, because I, I have not learned the new laws and its procedure. With these few words, I uh, declare this webinar as inaugurated. I, I wish um, that uh, the, the rest of the proceedings will be beneficial to everybody. Thank you very much, Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. Your words are truly inspiring. You have been able to see the good things in all, and uh, hopefully with uh, we should be able to go forward with the new law and the new law should make India a much more industry-friendly country. I think we are climbing up the ladder, both India and Kerala, and hopefully we'll be uh, doing quite well soon. And uh, I wish under, I am sure with uh, under PH Kurian's uh, guidance, Rira also will create a new era in real estate sector also, because that is also in real bad shape. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence and your inspirational speech. Thank you very much, sir. No. Thank you. I will continue till my friend uh, uh, GC Gobal. I haven't seen him for a long time. So I just want to see him, say Thank hello you, to him, and I'll also hear uh, his words. Yes, sir. He's, he's, some more time. he's on going. He used to be on next. Thank you. And yeah. one word I would like to add now. The, this meeting has exceeded all expectations. Even before 8.30, the Zoom was full. So I had, I had actually requested PH Kurian, sir, and the speaker, Zagzakir Alnan and Gopala Pulasa to log in at 8.15. Because I was having a thought that it might be too full. So I have already put it on Zoom Live. It is on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com uh, slash QPMPA. So that will be uh, where you can uh, see it at leisure. And this will be available as a recording also. If, if anybody has any urgency, they can leave and uh, see it at their leisure. And uh, thank you very much. We'll go on to Dr. Gopala Pulla sir's speech, uh, uh, keynote address. Thank you. Gopala Pulla sir, please. Good evening to everyone. Uh, respected uh, PH Kudyan, uh, whom I consider as my own brother, in the sense that we had a long, long association for several decades. We had traveled together, discussed labor issues, on labor issues, everything. So I have no idea about uh, his association. So uh, let me first acknowledge his presence here as, as a most uh, motivating and inspiring thing. Uh, Mr. Devin Prabhagar, Mr. Advocate Anil Narayan, and uh, other uh, professional fraternity friends. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to join uh, this elite group. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the topic is concerned, let me confine the entire thing to 10 minutes. Uh, I'll try to do that. But uh, even though I want to speak at least an hour because the subject is so interesting and so wide. However, uh, there is uh, the, the government of India in their wisdom after taking a couple of years, they have consolidated the, all the labor laws, numbering around 44, if you really look at it. First, they came with the wage code mm -hmm. as the first consolidation of the uh, payment of wages and related uh, legislations. And uh, thereafter, uh, the other three codes, so the major one is industrial relations code and uh, code on social security, and also the code on occupational safety, health, et cetera, et cetera. These are the four codes. What is the need for this code? If you really look at the Indian scenario of industry, Mr. P. H. Kurian was uh, uh, commissioner and industrial secretary, I mean, uh, uh, additional chief secretary of industries for a time. And he's of doing business also his favorites and he was trying to do his, I mean, he has uh, brainstormed several, several occasions on how, how to ease the doing business and uh, whether he failed or success is a different matter, but Kerala is Kerala. A uh, lot of effort has been done. Uh, however, the government of India, in their wisdom, they decided that you know, there are some sort of a, a superficial consultation and decided to go ahead. The unions were a little upset, but there is no question of upsetness because there is a need of the hour. Why industries are not coming? There may be several factors. The major factor is this ease of doing business. It becomes a headache. To start an industry in Kerala or in India is such a big headache. The bureaucracy, 
the or rattabism whatever you call it the inspector raj no the so called inspectors or the power centers wanted to get away get out of their uh, you know their arena of fort you know that sort of power center even today the same thing uh, even after the introduction of this bill also you know in the initial stage it is going to be a difficult process because people will be reluctant so the why the law is necessitated is that you know so many formats so many cumbersome process this has to be reduced at least in four courts the entire thing can be this thing and the format also has been modified as mr ph kutian mentioned the rules has to be framed by each and every state which where there is a need for the industrial associations or industry themselves has to advise the state government how how to simplify it further as for the i don't want to elaborate on this because it's a long subject as far as the hospital sector is concerned almost all the laws except the factories act and related things will come into for the clinical establishment act is something separate which is the uh, backbone of the hospital sector otherwise the payment of wages act the minimum wages act fraud and fund act esa payment of bonus act gratuity workman's compensation and so many other things uh, in industrial dispute in part of the industry the whole problem was in 1970 our uh, learned judge mr hidayatullah said that uh, hospital cannot be an industry because it is a service matter and uh, our own kerala uh, honorable justice uh, mr v r krishnayar in bangalore water sewerage uh, case in 78 decided that the hospital as such well education institution will come under the definition of industry that was a big blow to the industry as such you know we are not supposed to criticize the judiciary the position still continued nobody has changed it even though some high court made some modifications here and there the situation continues but in this labor court one great thing has happened is that you know without making any uh, fundamental changes there are certain uh, you know modification which has come with regard to the fixed period of employment and also uh, uh the 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 strike there is some control mechanism on strikes the hire and fire policy if i can make it a crude statement uh hire and fire policy in the sense uh, uh certain period is fixed by which uh, uh, the the retrenchment is made possible easily made possible before that you have to go to government for preparations and things like that now that is not needed up to 300 workers if there is an employment you know hospital or otherwise you can very well go for retrenchment under certain regulated conditions which is very easy no government permission is required i think details uh, i hope that anil narayan will come out uh, with this thing and the fixed period of employment is another wonderful thing even though you have to pay salary as per the permanent employees salary scale or the minimum minimum of that it is you are bound to pay but there is a fixed term okay let us say that uh, this is a big boon in the sense uh, an industrialist coming he don't know uh, when you make a transparent type of recruitment once you are in you found that he is totally inefficient useless etc you just can't do anything with that that situation you can always tide over by saying that any appointment can be 2 years 3 years 4 years. you decide the period then you have to suffer only that one number of period if it is totally inefficient you can say no sorry uh, your period is over uh, after the 2 year or 3 year period originally fixed uh, you, you are gone out that's a fixed term employment which is permitted by law whether it's a nursing staff or paramedical staff or a doctor or anybody for that matter you can use the fixed term uh, fixed type of employment for anybody if he is good you can continue next 3 year next 5 year a lifetime or whatever maybe you can that sort of a flexibility is given the only thing is you can't exploit by saying that because you are the fixed uh, period your salary will be reduced to half no that is not possible the salary which is normally for that particular position you are what you are paying otherwise that many that amount has to be paid to him also plus uh, uh, other facilities there is a, there is no ban in uh, making engagement through outsourced agencies also 
there is no problem. The only thing is that between these two, the only problem is that there are also you pay the minimum of the scale of the post which you are engaging. You can change the post, that's a different question. And uh, most of the uh, format and the things, they, the, the, uh, the new registration wanted to put through online or computer. But here, the day it started thinking all, all itself, the resistance also started coming because people doesn't want to uh, use the online system. The reason for resistance is the so-called inspector latch. See, one solution, I, Mr. P. H. Kirin also was talking to the Niti Aayog uh, members and uh, senior people on that. And they all, one voice said that the only way to minimize the corruption is put everything online, put, use the computer maximum. If you can make it 99%, uh, that is the best. The, the element of subjectivity, you can reduce it. In this uh, new four labor codes, uh, use of uh, online system is more or less uh, made uh, uh, mandatory. At the same time, the whole problem is usage of that. There will be resistance. For example, you take the example of Head Load Workers Act. As per the Head Load Workers Act, in our domestic, in our my home, if I am bringing some domestic products in a truck loading, the work, the head load workers are not told, supposed to disturb. The act is very clear. But today, what is happening? Law is not enforced. If that sort of a condition comes in the labor code, you have to wait and see. In the beginning itself, you have to nip in the bed. The senior bureaucrats who is dealing with the home affairs or labor affairs in their home itself, they, they, they suffered. But they silently somehow adjusted because they wanted to make a big halagula on that issue. That is the problem. In a residence association, if those people join together and say, what, what, what do you want? This is a house. Why you want to disturb? That sort of reactions has to come. Similarly, in a hospital setting, go by the labor court. If you are doing that way, there is a resistance of online. You have to react together. If one single hospital or one single establishment trying to do something against, then you will be cornered by the bureaucracy also. Not bureaucracy means inspector batch, lower level. You have to go to the uh, secretary level or commissioner level and uh, discuss the problems and uh, find out a solution to solve it. That is necessary. Uh, so that is uh, as for the minimum wage, just manipulation of records and uh, uh, there will be a lot of grievance for non-payment, which how do you handle that? One big issue, some of the hospital people a couple of years back, when the necessary salary issue has come, in Cochin, I was staying in a hotel. Somebody came and approached me to discuss uh, the, the salary matter because suddenly from 10,000 or 15,000 rupees, uh, you are all face the problem. Suddenly become 20,000 rupees or 25,000 rupees. This is a big problem. I, have, I am looking at it in a different angle. There are a lot of nursing colleges in Kerala, a lot of nursing colleges in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and other places. The quality of the nursing training in many other states, at least as 70 to 80% of those outstate training is deplorable, like a cattle shed. That's not even a hospital, but they get degree and come back. Maybe self-financing colleges or uh, autonomous universities or whatever, the quality is deplorably poor. They also come in this, in large numbers. Those people don't mind in serving us or 5,000 rupees or 8,000 rupees. We are enjoying that for quite a long time. Here is the problem when you make the rules. Think with the experts or pundits on labor law. Whether you can classify ABC in the quality of nursing profession also, number one. Otherwise, you try to give the fixed term employment to nursing profession. There can be good people from outside, who are trained outside also. I am not denying that. Such people can continue with the full salary because you cannot manipulate the salary because the salary time is fixed. The only thing is whether the classification is possible, you have to find out whether it's legally permissible or not. Then comes the uh, enforcement authorities. How do you turn when they come with the issues and problems. It's a separate subject because it's a land order problem which has to be dealt with also. Then coming back the uh, the, the, the registrations uh, in the hospitals. I was going through the uh, 
uh, website and try to understand uh, few things. I think my time is over. There are 154 various legislations if you want to set up a hospital and run it. Can you imagine? For uh, laws governing the commissioning of hospital is coming to some 17 numbers in India. And uh, laws governing to the qualification and practice and conduct of professionals, there are 10 numbers laws. And uh, laws governing management of patients, another 12 numbers. Laws governing sale, storage of drugs and sale medication, safe medication, 10, 10 number. And laws governing environment safety, another 11 numbers of legislation. And then uh, laws governing to employment and management of manpower, 24 numbers. Law, that, will be, that is coming to the code, it is reduced to two or three maximum. Laws governing the safety of patients, public and staff within the hospital premises, 14 number. Then comes the laws governing the medical legal aspect, five numbers, IPC and so many other things. Laws governing professional training and research, five numbers. Laws governing business aspect come to 10 numbers. It goes like that. Licenses, certificates required for hospital comes to 20 numbers. And uh, periodic reports and return as legal commitment for hospital comes to 16 numbers. Everything put together, it comes to 154. Uh, there is no time to read the whole thing properly. You could have displayed the slides. This is the, I mean, nobody knows about it. There's so many number of uh, legislations are required, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a need for a comprehensive legislation like the uh, labor code for hospitals also. It can be codified into two or three. All the 154 can be two or three. There is, I mean, your association should move forward to do that also because that will uh, reduce all our burden into nothing. So these are some random thoughts uh, on uh, this uh, labor issue. I just only wanted to remember that, you know, the first uh, uh, medical code started by Charaga and thereafter uh, in the Western style of medicine, Hippocrates, you know that all these things. And it was there during the Chanakya time, that's all BC. And then thereafter the Bombay Medical Act comes in 1856 or so. It goes on like that. Now we are reached uh, BCI, uh, uh, sorry, MCI, Medical Council of India today, uh, who are the controlling body. That is also under, going to have some modification in the near future. News report has come. I think because the time gap, I am stopping it here with these words, let me conclude. Thank you very much. Again, thank you for my great brother, uh, Mr. P.H. Kurian and uh, Mr. David Prafagar and uh, Anil Narayan. Thank you very much. That was indeed a very informative talk. We are very fortunate to have you with us. Uh, I hope you'll join us more in uh, future programs and enlighten us on this topic. Now we'll go on to advocate Anil Narayan and sir, we'll have question session at the last because I think we might run a little short of time. We'll go to advocate Anil Narayan, sir, and hear his talk. He's doing a PowerPoint presentation. Please listen carefully. If you have got any questions, please message me and I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions. Over to advocate Anil Narayan. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, I am thankful to uh, the president, uh, Dr. Sarojini Madam, and uh, Mr. Devin for inviting me. In fact, it, it is, uh, I'm really delighted to have the presence of uh, an experienced bureaucrat, that too, a person holding the position of labor commissioner who has uh, uh, seen both sides of the tough unions, the requirements, the demands, and the reputed uh, uh, industrialists representing their cause. I'm also very happy to have the presence of uh, Dr. Uh, Gopal Abhilasar, who was experienced uh, uh, a different line. Uh, he, he all along been in the uh, uh, the central and uh, state public sector undertaking, uh, facing a lot of uh, demands of the union and how he was handling, tackling the situation in a government uh, controlled scenario. So his presence has also added a lot of value to the discussion. The reason for coming together or joining together at the today's evening session is definitely the hospital 
entrepreneurs are very keen to watch. The government of India, the parliament has come out with code. We, everybody is reading the paper that the parliament has come out with the four courts. That too, in the absence of a strong, in the, in the absence of opposition, the three courts on 23rd September has been passed. But as a layman or as an entrepreneur running the hospital, the basic question arises is whether these courts have really liberalized or my running of the establishment of the hospital has become easy or not. As on today, I had a number of difficulties because a number of legislation, both the central and the state, I think more than 44 legislation of the state government and more than 300 statutes of the different states, states have their own labor statutes. The reason being, labor being the in the concurrent list in the constitution, the state can come out with the legislation as well as the center can also come out of the legislation. That is why we find central legislation as well as state legislation. Only thing is when the state comes out of the state legislation, it will have to get the concurrence of the central president of India. The reason being, there should not be any inconsistency between the central and the state. And the president has to give an assent, then only the state can come out with the legislation. That is why uh, we call it as labor in the concurrent list. The total scenario, if you look at the hospitality, the hospital industry, definitely the hospital is an industry, but you're all scared, you know, why hospital is an industry? Long back, 78, Justice Krishna here has come out his Supreme Court judgment that hospital is an industry industry and wherein he has opened up even a pan shop employing a single employee is also an industry starting from Thirimala, Thiripadi, Temple or for that matter uh, a, a government organization. PWD is an industry, Central PWD is an industry, even VSSE is held as an industry surprisingly. So the scope of the industry has been so widened by the Supreme Court decision and so far no judges has reversed his judgment on the term or the definition of industry under the industrial dispute side. When it comes, when you are coming into the ambit of the industry, you are put to a lot of difficulties. You engage an employee, then you remove an employee, the provisions of the industrial dispute sites comes into operation. You cannot get rid of an employee as we think. Most of the employers are just, you know, orally asking the emplo employees to uh, to uh, be out from the employment. But the but the reason being, many of the employees are not aware of their uh, their uh, rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And as a result, many of the employees are not bothered about the hiring and firing process. The the difference of the present industrial scenario is 1991, the Indian economy was, was opened up by Dr. Manmohan Singh. And after the economy was opened up in 1991, the competition has become really tough. Multinational hospitals have started coming to India. And now after 20, 20, uh, after now uh, 20 to 30 years, now, it has slowly, the industry have really, hospitals really felt that multinational companies have started coming in and the competition has become tough. You take, for example, laboratory. Oh, most of the laboratories are tied up with multinational. As a result, the small operators without any professionalism will find it difficult to survive. Take, for example, DDRC. It has tied up with SRL. A multinational company. As a result, the small operators will find it difficult. So, same way in the hospital industry, also many of the multinationals have started coming in India, and the question of survival of the hospital industry is going to be tough in any case. 
So that is a situation the government of India thought our labor statutes have become a stumbling block for the smooth functioning of the hospital. I don't know. We had more than 300 labor statutes of different states and 44 central statutes. Is it a real problem for the industrialist hospital industrialists? I'll say no. So far, we have been talking about, we have been hearing about uh, strikes, lockout, etc., etc. But the labor statutes has never been a stumbling block for the development of the industry. Maybe five percentage of the statute uh, uh, statute have been uh, putting the employer in difficulty. It is not the fact alone. Coupled with that, now the digitalization, the economy, the ecosystem. System has totally changed. Now it is digital economy wherein every application we give for license under the corporation, under the uh, uh, village office, from the uh, various legislation. You, you, if you are looking for a contract labor license registration or license registration, or you want to apply for a shop under the Kerala shops and commercial establishment, all the hospitals will come under the shops and commercial establishment side. So the process has become digitalized. So as a result of the digitalization or the digital disruption or the digital intervention, the, the functioning of the hospital industry, I'll say has become more and more smooth. But the government of India was more concerned with let us have the, uh, we have a number of legislation, but to put into practice all those sta uh, statutes have become only in the books only because uh, of the 200, 300 labor statutes to file returns on each labor statute, it's, it has become all the more difficult and impossible. And result, the inspectors who conduct the inspection always will take advantage of the number of statutes by, by raising un unwanted uh, objections. As a result, the employees are not getting any benefit out of the so-called complicated labor statute. That is why the government of India thought to have. Uh, we will rationalize all the 44 labor statutes central, and uh, those statutes have been codified into uh, 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 code on wages, the most important code on wages uh, that was uh, already, that code on wages was already passed by the Senate, uh, uh, legislature, uh, parliament. Now the rule has to come. On 23rd of September, three more uh, labor uh, courts have come into operation. So what I'm trying to tell you is, in a hospital industry, the most difficult task for a hospital industry is to manage the minimum wages applicable to the hospital industry. The 19, the 2018 minimum wage notifications had a sudden jump from the earlier 2013 notification of the minimum wages act, wherein, wherein you have to pay more than 20 to 25 thousand rupees for a nurse in a hospital. Will it be a practical affair? I'm sure that 99 percentage of the hospital industry is not covered under the minimum wages act. You have number of labor statute. What is the purpose of having labor statute when you find it difficult to implement those legislation? I'm sure in Trivandrum area, except a few hospitals like maybe uh, Kim's or uh, a Cosmopolitan Hospital or a few other hospitals are not in a position to pay 25,000 rupees to a nurse. And the reason is, I can tell you, the social reality versus the legislation. You can get a nurse for just below 10,000 rupees. People are willing to come and join. And as a result, the employers are willing to take the employee with a salary less than 10,000 rupees. And the statute says that you have paid 25,000 rupees. So it is a social reality versus legislation. That is what number of legislation, imposing number of legislation is not going to change the economic or the ecosystem that we have. Healthcare is a really a fantastic area where we have to improve a lot. If you look at the statistics, Kerala stands number one in India in healthcare. You're not, I'm not exaggerating for every thousand uh, 
citizens, we don't have even a single doctor. We have only 0.5% a doctor for 1,000, uh, uh, not patients, 1,000 citizens on an average. In, in India, if you come to the, uh, uh, to the statistics of Kerala, maybe we, are, we, we may be still better. But what I'm trying to tell you is the government cannot cater to the needs of the uh, people, particularly people below the poverty level. Line. And that is what started cropping up and catering to the needs of the common man, not only common man, but most of the. Let's see. I'm, I'm, it is, I'm not exaggerating for that matter. Even people or doctors employed in medical colleges, suppose they are handicapped with any kind of sickness, they don't prefer to go to the medical college or government hospital, they prefer to go to the private hospital. The reason being the service in a private hospital has dramatically improved a lot. But I'm not happy the way the, the private hospital management uh, is running the hospital. The starting from the very appointment of an employee to tell the separation or the retirement of an employee, you come across a different statute starting from your appointment letter, which is governed by the contract of employment. Then you cover the employee under various statutes, employee, Provident One, DSI, etc., etc. That goes on. But if you look at the <coughs> hospitality industry, the digital intervention of the hospitality industry, the hospital industry is tremendous. The scope is tremendous. Starting from the sourcing of an employee, now you have. Uh, Technology enabled uh, uh, sourcing. How many hospitals in Kerala is doing that, adopting that? We go on employing the manual system of application, submitting the application and uh, processing it. It takes a lot of time, energy. You have to spend a lot of money for engaging a number of employees. And artificial intelligence has invaded. Even robots can uh, conduct interviews. The chatbots can arrange a and the, the preliminary screening can be done. But how many, how, how many of us have uh, made use of all those uh, technologies? But in a competitive environment, I am certain that unless we introduce the tech-oriented transformation to survive in the industry will be difficult. So we all should be able to uh, equip ourselves, whether it's a small hospitals or a big hospital, we should be able to uh, improve upon our uh, uh, our uh, our system, the tech-oriented system, so that we can uh, 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 make the system so smooth and survive better in the industry. One of the most the most important thing I want to say, uh, tell you is our Indian economy, our Indian ecosystem has changed into a gig economy. When I talk about gig economy, the current trend is we don't engage employees. We engage freelancers. For hospital industries, you from the very beginning, we have been engaging freelancers as doctors, apart from the regular doctors. What is the advantage of engaging uh, of freelancers? I need not explain. You can engage administration people, you can engage accounts, you can engage uh, 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 laboratory technicians. Now, big laboratories are, uh, big hospitals are renting out space for the uh, 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 radio diagnostic and laboratories are engaged in the hospital so that you don't have to engage employees for running uh, a, a diagnostic center. You'll get the best uh, talented people to look into that and in a sharing basis you can. But how many hospitals have entered into that? And uh, technology, the, the, infor the information te technology in hospital management has dramatically changed the situation. Say for example, your inventory control by, uh, uh, by your uh, technology, the moment you take stock of your uh, entire uh, uh, consumables, the moment one by one day one, you, you consume consumable, automatically your system will generate how many 
uh, items have you consumed and what is the balance you need not engage your employees by paying and looking at him whether he is properly maintaining or not so introduction of the hospital management system for a better uh, performance or a better uh, 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 better uh, survival this kind of technology is all the more important the <clears throat> in the present gig economy even the government of india is supporting the industry supporting the or the hospitals let us not engage more and more employees we have been adopting the tactics of engaging more and more contract employees i am sure that none of the hospitals in trivandrum or for the matter throughout india is not running without a contract labor system for that matter even developed countries like us and uk they engage contract employees for any the hospital and the present system the government of india is allowing a freelance system wherein you don't have to engage employees you don't have to engage employee through a contract also now you can engage freelancers when i talk about a freelancer he is not an employee there is no employer employee between the freelancer and usl a, a, a doctor coming as a consultant he is a, a freelancer he is not controlled and supervised by the hospital there is no liability on the part of the hospital whereas when you engage an employee a doctor in a permanent role you will have to pay gratuity to him you will have to pay provident fund you will have to pay other all uh, benefits so when you engage a freelancer you get the best quality service because because you are at liberty to assess him and you are at liberty to remove him say for example even in kerala uber sumato sugi have stepped in why sugi don't or sumato don't engage any of the employees but the interesting thing is our prime minister has copied the system adopted by the california where california the first state where social security has been introduced to the uh, uh, freelance uh, uber and ola because they were all agitating because we are all freelancers we don't have any social security unlike a regular employee so that is where the present government the legislator in the code has come out with a gig workers where a separate social security has been provided to the gig workers i'm not going into the intricacies of the codes because hospital industry is more concerned with their own problems and issues and we are here to discuss that but the fact of the matter is engaging freelancers have become all the more it has become a legalized uh uh avenue the government of india is telling yes you engage freelancers if you can without an employer employee relationship but at the same day the government says you should provide or the government should provide some sort of social security as that followed in the california so that is why the government has started off with a a, a freelance system where after the adoption of the technology you don't have to engage your finance manager with a team of 10 or 15 employees then there uh, can be outsourced a chartered accountant or a person who can outsource with the uh, with the technology you don't you, you only you will have to coordinate with that the entire uh, uh, personnel administration in a hospital can be outsourced to a freelancer where he will adopt the latest technologies he will source candidates even he will assess the he will <coughs> he will look into the performance appraisal you engage an employee to assess the review of an employee probation after probation confirmation salary increase etc i'm talking about big hospitals but those will be replaced by technology when the uber man serve your food the moment he is out he will you will get a message that what is the service he has rendered so you have better evaluation than our manual evaluation so time has come in the hospital industry also we should adopt new and latest technologies to reduce the costs so that in a competitive environment 
the hospital industry can survive. The days in future is going to be really tough unless you professionalize your systems, unless you uh, regularize and think in terms of that, it is going to be a difficult task. Not This is not the uh, very old period of uh, running a hospital. So coming back to the code on labor statutes, you're more worried about how an employee can be thrown out. As the same as how you can engage him. The code specifically says that you cannot engage an employee orally. You have to give a letter of appointment to the employee. Probably, I'm, 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 I'm afraid how many hospitals in Kerala or for that matter in India who are willing to give an appointment letter to the employee. I'm talking about reputed hospitals. They will not. As a matter of fact, if you don't issue an appointment letter and an employee challenges that, the employer will be in a disadvantageous position and the employee can take advantage over your oral appointment. You terminate an employee without an order of uh, termination. You orally terminate an employee, that also complicates the issue which is resulting in more liability to the employer. So this statute specifically says that you should have a letter of appointment. Then the other, uh, the statute, the, the codification of the four uh, codes, which I am not reproducing all the codes because uh, the hospital industry is more worried about the gratuity. The gratuity act says, if you have put in five years of service, I, on his retirement or resignation, you will have to pay gratuity at the rate of 15 days for every completed year of continuous service. That has been changed in favor of the employee. If an employee completes even one year after his resignation or retirement or leaving the organization, you will have to pay gratuity at the rate of 15 days for every completed year in favor of the employee. On the other side, the plus on the side of the employer is the hospital is at liberty to retrench, lay off, uh, lock out, etc. without the permission of the government. Earlier, if your employment strength was more than 100 employees in a hospital, if you want to shut down your hospital operation, you would have to get approval from the Secretary of Labor. Uh, uh, it is not the approval, but you'll have to submit an application for closure and then the process of payment of the closure compensation, etc. you'll have to carry out. Now, that 100% cap has been enlarged to 300. That means up to 300 employees, you don't have to give any permission or approval from the government for close to the hospital. I think uh, that is also not a worrying issue for the hospital. I need not go into the intricacies of that. Another area is, we are all talking about the ease of doing the business. The government of India is looking at ease of business. What is the ease of be, uh, doing the business? We have taken only a few steps forward. But I don't under underestimate that ease of doing the business. Yes, government has. From 1947, most of the statute, labor, the labor statute, nobody has even dared to take steps to consolidate the labor statute, which the present government has dared to do that. So we should appreciate the codification of the labor laws to make it so simple that all industrial, whether it is uh, factory or the hospitals, uh, the, the, the entrepreneurs has found those statutes, the present statutes have become so easy and we will call it as ease of doing the business so that more and more industrialists will come to India for investment. Why people are going to, we're reading in the paper, industries from China is migrating to uh, South Korea, uh, Thailand, Taiwan, Vietnam, etc. What is the reason? There, the Ease of doing is much, much better than this. You can, you should issue an appointment letter, but removing an employee is not that as difficult as that we have. Not only that removal of the employee, 
See, in Vietnam, the International Labour Organization specifies when you are drafting legislation, it should be in uh, uh, in conformity with the International Labour Organization guidelines. And India has also passed labour statute saying that you cannot engage employees for more than eight, hour, eight hours in a day. And if you engage more than eight hours, you'll have to pay double wages of overtime. But Vietnam, in fact, I went through the, the legislation of Vietnam. They are also almost the same statute. But practically, Vietnam engages employees for two shifts continuously with the break of one hour. There is a statute, but the employees, the outlook, the attitude of the employees is totally different. And they are willing to produce more as a result. The industrialists will also survive. Uh, the employees will also make more money and they spend money and they enjoy. So I will say the present labor statutes, how far it is uh, improved, the ease of doing the business, I don't know. When I, when I once again, I, uh, my time is running short, once again, I am emphasizing on the hospital industry. When you go to the hospital, yesterday also I've been to the hospital, a big hospital in Trivandrum. The customer relation with the patient and the patient bystanders are extremely poor. When a bystander or the patient is approaching the hospital, the hospital, the bystanders expect you to be treated as a guest, as not as a patient or the bystander. Unless you change the attitude, it will be difficult to survive in the hospital industry. Because when you, when you approach the hospital, the starting from the reception to the bill settlement, the process has become more or less government affairs. So unless you change, unless you train and develop the employees, we as hospital fraternity, we consider, we don't consider employee as an asset to the organization. And I'm sure that 100% is the hospital, except multinational hospital, the very first day they engage the employee on the table. And from the very first day, 10 o'clock onwards, you tell the employee, to start the registration of employees in the reception. If that is the, the mindset of, of the employee. Unless you change that, you have to train, you have to develop that employee to meet the requirement of the, uh, 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 the patients and the bystanders. If you don't match those uh, requirement of the patients to survive in the market is going to be a tough job. Right now, we have no alternatives. That is why we are compelled to go to hospitals where the services are extremely poor. When the, when the patients and the bystanders feel that you are treated as a guest, you will definitely go back to the hospital. I still remember I had been to the hospital in Bombay, Bridge County Hospital, where the moment you enter into the hospital, the uh, good-looking receptionist, uh, they'll come and invite you. Yes, sir, where can you take you to the hospital? Which is the department you want to. You feel comfortable. When you are comfortable, you feel like going back to the hospital again. Not only you go to the hospital, you tell 100 people that, oh, that hospital is extremely good. You don't bother much about the, the competency of the doctor. That's a separate, <coughs> secondary issue. But the moment you walk in, if you feel, if your staff can uh, put you at ease, you will definitely go to the hospital unless you change the attitude of the people. It is not the reception alone. I'm talking about the end there, the, the attitude of the doctors to the patients. That has to be changed. And we should spend money for training and developing those human resources. Unless you train and develop the human resources to the to match the expectation of your customers, the future is going to be tough. So that what I'm humbly uh, submitting is the employers should open up and think of whether we are meeting the requirement of the customers. Once we we should never think of we are spending money for training and development of the uh, people training and development to achieve the target of the, the customer.
customers is a prime importance so the healthcare industry hospital management uh, which have been i think or oh, five more minutes so so the five the four codes is code on wages which deals with the minimum wages act nammal ella boothi mutikondirikkunna 2018 la minimum wages act payment of wages act payment of wages act parayna eyam thidikku munbe shambalam kodukanam aayiram tholilaligal koodil undengil 10th thidikku shambalam kodukanam and a certain other deductions payment of wages act the third legislation is equal remuneration act male and female ne ore shambalam kodukanam hospital industry is not worried about that then the fourth legislation is the bonus act so the four piece of legislation bonus equal remuneration act payment of wages act and minimum wages act combined together into code on wages the second code is the code on industrial relation a tough code the it combined only three statutes industrial dispute act tholil tarkam nammal ellam parna hospital industry aanannu parna our definition varuna tholil tarka niyamam then trade union act of 1926 pre independence legislation so far nobody has taken an initiative to retract to have a look at have a re look at the trade union act now you have sole bargaining agent to deal with the union for that you should have more than 51 percentage of the total employees then only you need to uh, recognize as a sole bargaining agent and the other unions also you should have minimum 20 percentage of your employment strength to deal with to discuss with right now if you have 10 employees also the trade union will come and give a letter that i should also be called for the discussion so the trade union act the industrial relations act and the third statute uh, is going to be uh, standing orders uh, and the standing orders act right? standing orders where 300 and more employees need to be have a standing order it is not an exaggeration to say as of as on today the kerala government has notified that 50 or more employees are employed the hospital should have a standing order i am trying to be more practical how many hospitals in kerala has got in the standing orders very few very few so now that has been that 50 has been a large to 300 employees so those of us who have not uh, resorted to for the standing orders now we can continue we can relax it is going not going to be issue so that's the code on industrialization and uh, the third is the code on social security which you are very much worried because the social security covers your provident fund in esi act which creates a lot of hassles for you because the provident fund and esi act says you have to pay provident fund for the casual temporary bedly contract trainees everybody you have to enroll in the provident fund act which is the the most difficult task for an employer to cover a casual temporary bedly trainee etc in a hospital environment that too similarly simultaneously the act on esi creates a lot of hassles for the industry so the present legislation gives an exemption for you the present right now once you are covered under the provident fund and esi act you cannot come out of the act because once you employ 20 employees the epf act comes into operation and you cannot go out on the clutches of the provident fund even if your total employment strength is below 20000 20000 20 employees same way esi uh, one of the change that made was esi if you are employing 10 or more employees only you can and uh, register under the esi act now you are, if you are employ even less than 10 employees <coughs> the employer can get a, a registration under the esi act and voluntarily he can continue to do that earlier it was not so a bit of pitance here and there in the labor legislation shuffling here and there in what way the hospital industry has benefited if you frankly put a question 25 percentage of the ease of doing the business have been achieved because you don't have to file numerous returns to the government 
because when you file a return, the uh, 44 uh, legislation central, when you file a return, if you don't file the return, a prosecution can be launched for non-filing the return. Who has benefited from that? So that headache is over. And uh, the last, I can tell you the important thing is, with the digitalization and after the introduction of the uh, Information Technology Act of 2000, you need not maintain the physical form of attendance register, wage register, master roll, or service record, etc. You can maintain digital records, which is permissible under the Information Technology Act. And uh, I must say, we are slightly in the shifting process because we are we are attuned to the physical forms and the inspector comes and he will ask for the physical form even if you go to the uh, enforces probably our labor officers can go and ask you know i don't want to see your uh, uh, computerized record i want to see your physical record that is a style of functioning and unless the mindset of the inspectors are going to change the ease of doing the business is not going to be very easy but it will be a, this will be a first step and uh, when I talk about uh, inspectors, the inspector Raj has been removed. So inspector Raj means Ravale, labor Garamarim, ESA Garamarim, Provident Fund Garam, Sale Tax Garam, GST Garamarim. So this inspector will go on coming. Now the designation of the inspector has been glorified into a facilitating officer. Am I right? with the change of the designation from inspector to facilitating officer, whether actually the attitude changes or not, it's a big question to be seen, but definitely we're going to change. Because the old mindset of the bureaucrats are not going to change immediately. It will take years together. At least a future generation, youngsters, they will be more inclined to uh, these changes. So, Inspection process has been changed. <coughs> now it is e inspections. Probably any of the hospitals, are you aware of that thing? Under the Provident Fund, ESI, labor, it is going to be e inspection. Now, when the inspector otherwise then steps into your organization and he asks for the balance sheet, your uh, profit and loss account, your uh, books of accounts, etc. Big employees are scared because the assessment comes into crores of rupees. And there, you know, the employers will have all difficulty. Now, after the introduction of the e-inspection, the facilitating officers are able to inform in advance. And then only he can come and conduct inspection. It's a very good move, but not immediately. Legislation provides that, but as I told the mindset of the inspectors, has to change and takes some more years. So e-inspection, uh, so ultimately, totally, I'll say the, the ease of doing the, uh, the business uh, of the uh, government of India, of the proposals of the Niti Aayog, or the uh, proposals of the government of India for uh, uh, strengthening the economy or strengthening the ecosystem has improved a lot definitely i don't say legislation can totally change you can have legislation because the legislation the statute says you have fundamental rights your directive principles that the constitution says that state should take care of the shelter food poverty etc of the citizens so you have legislation but can you uh, eliminate or eradicate poverty by the legislation. I think, uh, Mr. Devin, I am taking a lot of time, but uh, I, I, I was trying to make it so simple, and I can have an interaction for a, a, for some more time. The, uh, the participants are uh, happy to have it. Thank you very much for giving an opportunity to share. Uh, thank many. you. Thank you very much. Sir. That is a really Fantastic, sir. Fantastic. Great talk. Thank you very much, sir. And it was really need of the hour, and uh, we are very happy that within uh, five days of the the, the law being passed, we were able to have this uh, wonderful session and advocate Ravind Narayan sir did not need any preparation because he's extremely prepared with all legal points. Uh, we'll go on to the question. I think advocate and Shashikumar sir has raised his hand. Uh, Shashikumar sir, can you uh, take, uh, give your comment, please? Uh, 
शशिकुमार सर शशिकुमार ओके देन आई जस्ट एनीबडी एल्स वांट टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन uh some somebody should ask some question otherwise uh, i'll be unhappy because uh, you have not picked up uh, what i have said we'll go to our senior uh, qpmb leader tp t uh, surendran sir sir uh, i'm unmuted uh, surendran sir onnu samsarikkamo tp sir uh, okay adhe uh, sir uh, okay 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 samsarikane see uh, see uh, see i am dr tp surendran Oh. Uh, Vice President of QPMBA, oh, North yeah. Zone, oh, North yeah. Zone. Yeah. See, uh, all the speakers are there, done their job fantastically. There is no doubt. And actually, I congratulate uh, our Devin also for the initi initiation. But uh, lack of due to lack of time, everybody has they are cut short their talk, and uh, especially uh, uh, Advocate Anil Narayanan. He is of course he has done and he has given a lot of advice. how to run a hospital the reception people how what they have to do it was actually a, 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 really a blessing because he has advised us how how, how to run a hospital and that is there and uh, regarding the codes of the le new legislation he has not gone to the deep because lack of time so still he has done his job fantastically i appreciate in the, this type of uh, uh, this type of this webinars should be conducted more and more webinars should be uh, done conducted uh, and uh, i can uh, once again congratulate devin for his initiation thank you so much thank you uh, pramod sir namaka uh, dr pramod sir please unmute edata thank you sir for oh. chudi discussion ee oru vishayathile vendi vekku विश्वास ऑर्डर अंबीडिंग get a standing order approved by the labor department that's called certified standing order where you will have to categorize your employees what are the categories of employees you engage temporary who is a temporary employee who is a cash employee who is a probationer uh, who is a contract employee etc etc uh, has to uh, the other standing order but pala hospitals um 50 il koodilulla oru hospitals um idilotu poyittilla but uh, when adu pogaadirikkunnathu nammude disadvantage aanu but i will advise hospitals to draft the uh, standing order for the convenience of the hospital for the management standing order the terms and conditions nammude appointment letter il parayathathinu ubariyulla terms aanu ee standing order il varunnu appo appointment letter oru kittu kodukumbo nammal etra vayasil retire cheyum nammal oru disciplinary action eduthal engena टर्मेट वर्किंग हवर्स लीव इन एलो कंशन पर नमें के गवर्मेंट पल डॉक्टर गवर्मेंट जोलीस गवर्मेंटिंग गवर्मेंटिष्ठ विद स्टेट लेबर डिपार्टमेंट दि पर्पस् 
and object is it is a, a definitely a social security legislation for the welfare of the employees as well as for the uh, security of the employer abo standing order sir but sir namde kannur le senior leader yeah. dr but yeah yes yes so i wanted to ask you questions sir idu implement cheyan vendi ipo edesham etra samayam edukum government ne standing order sir implement cheyanayittu illa standing order alla standing order we know so adu button adu i told them oh the ee code gal ellam thanne already code on wages nu parayunnathu ऑगस्ट <laughs> Every probability, ये नाने कोड़े मुड़े, वाला रे immediately rules मंडा के notify हो। Because uh, it's a it's a इतने वो काले माइट इतने try ही तो या पद्धने जो मदल try ही ना तो standing का भी क्या रफ़े तो government discussions तो उन्हें ना आड़ने दिल्ला। अबो इप्पा opposition दे absence लिए लल्ला उनको डा pass आके definitely ये कोड़े के लल्ला उनको कोण डबाने दे। तेरे जाए तो uh, and we should be equipped to follow that. अब वो एक चेंज की ना हमको प्रदेश ही क्या बट वाला जो अब सर इन शॉर्ट वी कैन से दिस एक्ट इज फेवरेबल टू द हॉस्पिटल्स इज इन इट इफ आई से लाइक दैट नो 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 आई आई से एवरी स्टैट्यूट हैव प्लस एंड माइनस इन फेवर द एम्प्लॉयर एंड एम्प्लॉयी आई विल से इट इज मोर फेवरेबल फॉर द एम्प्लॉयर्स बिकॉज़ यू कैन एंगेज एन एम्प्लॉयी On a fixed period of contract employee, where all the, yeah, the total area, one goal that they can get is one goal. Like if you again, you can uh, renew it. That is, our master would come. Fifty thousand, like even fifty thousand, I am going to renew it. Goal that I am employee, your permanence right to buy it. For the future, I have the challenge. I am not doing that. So it is in favor of the employee. Hire and fire concept has been strengthened. Mumbu Munda, I don't know, but it has been strengthened. ഞാൻ അത് പറയാൻ കാരണം ഇതെല്ലാം പറയാമെങ്കിലും ഹൗ ഫാർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇൻസ്പെക്ടർ ദിസ് ഇൻസ്പെക്ടർസ് രാജ് ഷുഡ് ബി സ്റ്റോപ്ഡ് സീ ഓൾ ദി ഇൻസ്പെക്ടർസ് ആർ മേക്ക് ക്രിയേറ്റിംഗ് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് അൺനെസറിലി ഹരാസിംഗ് ദി ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ പീപ്പിൾ ദാറ്റ് ആസ് യു ഹാവ് സെഡ് ദി മൈൻഡ് സെറ്റ് ഹാസ് ടു ബി ചേഞ്ച്ഡ് ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ടേക്ക് ടൈം ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ടേക്ക് ടൈം സീ ഇപ്പോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് 100% കറക്റ്റ് ഇപ്പോ 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 പോയി ഞാൻ ഇടയ്ക്ക് നമ്മുടെ ഓഫീസിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരാൾ പോയി ഒരു ഇൻസ്പെക്ടർ അടുത്ത് കണ്ടോ പറയണേ कोरे लेजिस्लेशन लांग क्वालिफिकेशन गुंडों इधर के आर के वैडिया इधर के एम्प्लॉयर साइड क्या मिल गया ले सो दे हैव इट टोटली केटी वैडिया बिकॉज़ आई अदरी कारण है उन्हें अबे इधर काई के लिए लाम पिटी ची केटी इन्हीं अबे को पढ़े वाले फ्री आईटी अंदर से एम्प्लॉयर तरक्कन जाइए आनो अदरी � ഇപ്പ രജിസ്റ്റർ ചെയ്യാൻ പണ്ടത്തെ പോലെ ലേബർ ഓഫീസറുടെ അടുത്ത് പോയി താങ്ങേണ്ട ഒരു ആവശ്യമില്ല ഓൺലൈൻ യു സബ്മിറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഇൻഫാക്ട് ഞാൻ ടാറ്റയുടെ ബോംബേയിൽ ഇരുന്ന് 200 പരം എടിഎംസ് രജിസ്റ്റർഡ് ഓൺ ദ കേരള ഷോപ്പ് സൈറ്റ് ഇൻ കേരള ഐ ഐ ഹവ് ഡൺ ഇറ്റ് ദ പ്രോസസ് ഫ്രം മൈ ഓഫീസ് രജിസ്റ്ററിംഗ് ടാറ്റാസ് എടിഎംസ് അണ്ടർ ദ ഷോപ്പ്സ് ആൻഡ് കമേഴ്സ്യൽ എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ്മെന്റ്സ് ആയി മറ്റേതാണെങ്കിൽ ലേബർ ഓഫീസറുടെ അടുത്ത് പോയി തലചൊറിഞ്ഞു നിന്നു അയാളുടെ പല കാര്യങ്ങളും കേട്ടു അയാൾ പത്ത് തവണ നടത്തിച്ചു അപ്പോ ഹ്യൂമൻ ഇന്റർഫേസ് കുറഞ്ഞു എന്നുള്ളത് ഒരു ഭയങ്കര അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് ആണ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ഇന്റർഫേസ് കുറയുമ്പോ കറപ്ഷൻ കുറയും ഈ ഇന്റർമീഡിയറ്റ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീങ്സ് വരുമ്പോഴാണല്ലോ കറപ്ഷൻ വരുന്നത് നമ്മള് എന്താ നമ്മള് പഞ്ചായത്തിലോ കരമടയ്ക്കാൻ ചെല്ലുമ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് ഓൺലൈനിൽ കൂടെ നൗ യു കെൻ ടേക്ക് എൻകോമ്പറൻസ് സർട്ടിഫിക്കറ്റ് ബാധ്യത സർട്ടിഫിക്കറ്റ് പണ്ടാണെങ്കിൽ എൻകോമ്പറൻസ് സർട്ടിഫിക്കറ്റ് എടുക്കാൻ ചെന്നിട്ട് സാറെ ഈ തോന്നി തരുമോന്ന് ചോദിക്കും പറയും ഇന്ന് സാർ വന്നിട്ടില്ല ഒരാഴ്ച കഴിഞ്ഞു അപ്പോ ഹ്യൂമൻ ഇന്റർഫേസിനെ കുറയ്ക്കാനുള്ള എല്ലാ സംഗതികളും ഈ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഈ കോഡിൽ കൂടെ കൊണ്ടുവന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ബട്ട് ഐ ഡോണ്ട് സേ എല്ലാം കൂടെ കൊണ്ടുവരാൻ പറ്റൂല കുറച്ച് സ്റ്റെപ്സുകൾ എടുത്തു ബട്ട് ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻസ് കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഇതുവരെയും എടുക്കാത്ത സ്റ്റെപ്പുകൾ നമ്മൾ എടുത്തതിന്റെ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ട കാരണം എക്കോണമി ഓപ്പൺ ചെയ്ത് ബട്ട് നയൻറ്റി വണ്ണിൽ എക്കോണമി ഓപ്പൺ ചെയ്തിട്ട് ഇന്ന് കൊല്ലം എത്രയായി മുപ്പതോളം കൊല്ലമായി ബട്ട് ഇന്നാണ് നമ്മൾ തിങ്കിങ് ഓഫ് 
uh, a, a, some sort of codification, some sort of uh, uh, digital intrusion in our business. So unless digitalization completely takes off, I don't think industries will come to India because particularly industries from China is looking to invest in India and some other places. But if you can liberalize uh, or rationalize, smoothen the, uh, our uh, uh, labor laws as well as then more and more industry no. start coming to India. And uh, the, the potential of the uh, hospital industry the potential of buying everyone. Hospital Pandanangale, Ella Hospital Industry. He quoted a good one at the hospital, charitable purpose in a major portion, charitable service or purpose in the hospital is not an industry under the industrial dispute side. Mada Amarda and the Maya Trust, right now it is an industry. Thirimadra, Thiripati, Devasam Temple is an industry under the industrial dispute side. If you want to terminate a Chandakar of the temple, you will have to go through all the due legal process. Now it says when it becomes a charitable, because charitable is the parent of charitable in the real sense, and the major source of your income should be deployed for the charitable purpose. Then the 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 income tax will also approve under ATG as a charitable uh, institution. And probably you can take advantage of that. So the scope of a long industry on a particular thing, I have to or the barbershop it is an industry, it will come under the industrial disputes act. I am tied up with all unnecessary statutes. About legislation quantum matra nam gis on the compatible. We go by the Sarah Barnuale, Namuk Empathy Moonle. Namade headload workers act on the one with an the Indian Wellata Milata Kerala Matra Gondona Headload Workers Act as in the Udesham preamble parana. It is an act to regulate the headload workers. Headload. Loading and unloading has to be regulated through a process of registration and license of the headload workers. Kwala Mbati Mulaya, I think more than thirty-seven years have passed. Even the act specifically says the head load workers act doesn't apply to your domestic loading and loading purpose. He will come and ask in the way. The moment you call the police, the policeman will come and tell you, sorry, and then you go to the village and you will be inclined to give money. So legislation is not the, we have no dearth of legislation. No reconnecting legislation on that. But the process of uh, easing of the business for a hospital has not been uh, improved. I hope it will, it has to improve. It has to improve and definitely it will improve. And for that, all the hospital enterprises should pull up their socks and we should all work together for uh, better performance, better service, or uh, for a large in the business campaigns. There is definitely potential for that. Sir, shall I ask you a question? Air Angular or employee, Air Angular or employee, EFM, ESM, Banda, in the Soyam, we can allow us to do. Very simple. Namade, Namade, Namka Venda, Nubarina, or agreement, statute in Vidhamite, in the minimum way, the Venda Hospital, Venda, no open to work. It has no legal force. In the PF Venda, no one is good. Either Niabatin Edirite or a contract agreement to a is null and void. Any contract against the statute is null and void. So it's, it's not possible. Ashok Menon, sir, and the Glinch Cosmopolitan Ashok Menon, sir, Martha and the Bella Saranda, Sir Naglim Chuikan and Nagla, Yakol, Sandosha, Arigam, Sara, Pamil, Ruad, Sandoshonda, Ashok Menon, sir, please. Martha and the Bella Sara. Uh, Dr. Bijupilla, Ernapal. Uh, 
ഒരു 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 വേർഡ് ഓഫ് താങ്ക്സും പറയാനും ഡോക്ടർ ബിജു പിള്ളയ്ക്ക് ബിജു ആണ് എന്റെ ഇന്ന് കോ ഹോസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യാനും ഒരുപാട് കാര്യങ്ങളിൽ സഹായിച്ചതും പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാനും ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാനും വീഡിയോസ് ടാഗ് ചെയ്യാനും ബിജു ഒരുപാട് ഹെൽപ്പ് ചെയ്തു താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച് ബിജു ബിജു എന്തെങ്കിലും കമന്റ്സ് പറയാനുണ്ടോ വേറെ ആർക്കെങ്കിലും കമന്റ്സ് ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഓൾറെഡി പത്ത് മണി കഴിഞ്ഞു വേറെ ആർക്കെങ്കിലും കമന്റ്സ് ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു കോടതി നമ്മുടെ രാജ്യത്ത് പറയുന്നില്ല fraud can be removed as a patthavana jeyanonilla if a misconduct of misappropriation if an employee has committed you can remove him but under the due process of law what is the due process of law you give an ex- uh, detailed charge of allegation take his explanation arrange a personal hearing what you call as department inquiry and based on the findings of the inquiry officer you can take action depending upon the uh, gravity of the misconduct the more severe uh, the gravity the more uh, severe punishment sleeping while on duty is an uh, employment misconduct but you cannot terminate that employee it's a minor uh, coming late in the office is a misconduct but if you terminate the employee for coming late it the court has held it is shockingly disproportionate to the gravity of the misconduct and misconduct so punishment always proportionate to the gravity of the misconduct both in civil and state and everywhere the principles of natural okay thank you sir uh, ma- ma- martan rola sir and i you so i in the section thank you for that thank you very much sir for your presence sir gobala bala sir one summarize the angle sir please no 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 <coughs> i had only to uh, conclude only one point being a professional organization of medical practitioners my suggestion is that uh, make use of this uh, web webinars uh, which should be very convenient to doctors you know uh, in the evening hours uh, uh, once in a month or so to have certain topics selected which will be useful to the hospital industry which will be rejuvenate the mind of the people the medical professionals and uh, even the hospital running can be improved by knowing more and more new things so mr devin prabhagar you take the initiative discuss with uh, all others also once in a month have this meeting uh, probably one or two people not more than that because enough time should be given for these people uh, like uh, anil narayan you can s- select uh, other people also and uh, try to make it a due process continuous process of this meeting if everybody agree to this that is my only suggestion i i really congratulate the association because uh, professionalization can come only through the interaction interaction means experience of other hospitals experience of other people sharing the knowledge that is very very critical for running an hospital industry in a much more professional manner that is only thing i have to tell you thank you thank you very much sir if there are no more questions we will go to is there any is there any more questions or any remarks from advocate anil narayan sir uh, madhu sir or saroja madam wants to add anything ah uh, thank you sir if if not we will go on to water thanks by our joint secretary uh, dr abhilash balsalam nirmala hospital thank uh, peach kurian sir and uh, being the chair advocate tuvala uh, plus sir and advocate anil, anil narayan who gave us a very good talk uh, uh, what we understand that it is not uh, the uh, what we understand from the talk is that this these laws uh, are uh, coming a little, little bit less complicated is being uh, getting less complicated and more employer friendly thank you biju sir for lobbying for that uh, with the government earlier itself and uh, many stalwarts of the industry healthcare industry such as uh, our own ashok menon sir and uh, um, 
Martha Bulla sir and TP Sudhendran sir has also joined us and many other stalwarts sir have joined us with this. Thank you all for joining. Uh, we wish to have much more meetings like this. We will have much more meetings like this on the as an initiative from TP MBA. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vijay. I also acknowledge the presence of our dear treasurer, Tiruvarian sir. Uh, next time we will have more interactions. Thank you very much. I will be closing the session now. And as requested by all the participants, we will try to make it a repeated feature and we will get a very good speakers. Thank you very much. We started off with 100 plus audience and uh, more over on Facebook. And this recording will be available on Facebook for later viewing. And I hope uh, that more and more people will be able to view it on Facebook. Next time also, we'll be doing a Facebook Live so that uh, people can watch it again at the leisure. Thank you very much for the enormous participation. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly, we can leave.